The Helix is almost finished and I'm keen to show you what I've done. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 8 of my series on building a new model railroad. My name is Peter Borchards and I'm the builder and owner of BNSF Chicago Sub in N-Scale. Welcome to all my subscribers and those new subscribers. Thanks for joining. Those who haven't already subscribed, please click on the subscribe button down below and click on the little bell icon to be notified of all my upcoming episodes and to follow the progress of the build of this layout. So in this episode, I'm gonna show you the progress of my Helix. It's almost finished. I've done all the wiring, the track is down, and I'm gonna show you how I've done that. So let's get on with the update. So it's time to start working on the unit track, starting to fix it down in the Helix. So what I'm going to do is add the insulating joiners at all the um, block connections. So I've got five blocks on my Helix. And the reason for that is I want to have a block per length of train, just in case a train, something happens to the train inside the Helix, I want to make sure that block is, is protected so that the system knows there is a train in the Helix somewhere. Um, and using five blocks just means it's, it's more, a bit more accurate. Um, so just to show you where the blocks are, I'll zoom in here, you can see there is a block marking and so they're all in the same place all the way down just to make it easier for me. Um, so that's where the insulating joins will be and then after I've done that I will then start adding the feeders. So let's get started on adding the blocks. So these are the insulating joiners. These are the insulating uni joiners that Kato does. And I'll be replacing the uni join, the existing uni joiners at each block boundary. And I'll be replacing them with um, these insulating joiners. So with uh, Kato uni tracks, they use these uni joiners to connect the tracks. Um, they're pretty much, if I see if I can get a, a close up of one, they are a plastic connector with a metal rail joiner embedded in it. So it transfers the power and it also is a physical connection between the tracks. Now, because I'm having block detection on my layout and also um, on my Helix, um, I have got hold of these Kato um, insulating joiners, so insulating uni joiner, and that's a uni joiner without a metal joiner in it so it's just a piece of plastic that physically holds the connection the tracks together so what i'm doing is um what i did with my old layout and i use the outer track as the detected track and the inner track is the um you know sorry the inner outer rail as the detected rail and the inner rail as the common so that is this one over here is going to have the continuous track power going through it and this one is going to be broken up into the blocks. So each block will be in isolated from the other one with one of these joiners. So the way of doing it with the Kato Unitrack is, I mean, they've got this, this funny tool to remove the uni joiners, but I, never, I can never get it to work. Um, pretty useless, I think. Um, I just use a pair of pliers. So I just wrap it and just pull that off. So you can see the uni joiner just pulls off. And do the same with this one over here. And there we go, they're, they're now disconnected. Now to connect that, it's simple as just click it in like that. So that's my inner track and my outer track, and then the outer rail on both of the detected rails. So they need to be insulated from the next section along. So I then click them together, and there we go. So now we've got the insulated rail and the non-insulated rail. So now I'm just going to go through and connect all the other ones up and then I've got um, five detected zones on my, in my helix. Um, main reason for that is um, I want to be able to make sure that on each level I've got detection so that if a train stalls or comes um, dis becomes disconnected on any level it'll show up in the track de detection uh, on the on the block detection on the um, on the dispatcher panel. Um, some people will just have the whole helix as one block. I prefer doing it on each level as a block. It just gives me more control over detecting the um, any broken train or any split apart trains or any stall trains. Because um, I mean there might be times when I have more than one train in the helix at, you know, at a time. So I want to be able to have detection on each level. 
So that's why I've got um, five or well, four, four of the levels on the helix and then one on um, the outer, outer part of the helix. Um, so when it comes into the main, the rest of the layout. So um, I'm going to carry on doing the rest of the levels and then I'll show you how I do the wiring for these. Now that I've made my own uni joiner feeders, I'm now going to put them onto my track and then I'll show you how I just make an adjustment to this track to allow the feeder wire to come out. Now just to show you, this is one of the Kato feeder tracks. I'll show you quickly what it looks like. So it's just a short bit of track and underneath it's just got a, a socket. And then you've got your wire over here. This clips into that socket and then this goes to uh, the Kato unit. It plugs into the um, extension lead for the power. Now, if you look at this piece here, you can see it's got a notch on the side to allow the wires to come out from there to the side of the track. So I'm going to do the same with these. I'm going to make a slight notch on the side just to allow the wires to escape and to go to the side of the track. I'm not going to drill through my uh, baseboard to put the wires through on, well, through the helix boards. Um, I'm going to take it out via, through the side um, and I'll show you why I've done that. In a later video. So let me show you how I do this. So okay so here's the feeder joiner I made earlier and I'll just clip this in. You see it just clips in like that. I'll do the same with the other one. And then opposite track and then that one there now you can see there I've got all my feeders attached so what I'm going to do with this one here is I don't know if you can see there there's a slight notch there already and I'm going to use that to take the wire out of here and then to the side and I'll use a Dremel cutoff disc just to cut a little a little notch there just for the for the wires. So let me go get my Dremel and I'll cut that notch. Okay, I'm just going to make a small notch using my Dremel. So um, let's put this way around. It's easier for me. Now, excuse the the noise. It's going to be pretty noisy for a bit. So here goes. Okay, and you can see there, I've just made a small notch on the side. This doesn't have to be particularly neat because this is going in my helix anyway, but um, obviously if this was a, a visible track, I would have uh, made it a lot neater or would have done it through the baseboard, but this is not my helix, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's put that one back in again. Came out. Okay, so what I do, I'm gonna take that wire, push it really, flat so it's right flat in there and then I'll take that out the side and I'll do the same with this one but really flat take it out the side and now you can see here the wire is flat on the bottom and it comes out the side flush with the side so that is going to be a lot easier to install and then these wires I'll show you what I'll do with them I'm just going to take them out to a um, connector on the side. Um, what I could do um, is you just use some hot glue, in fact I might do that actually, just use some hot glue just to keep it in place just so the wires don't move when I install it, um, just to make sure it keeps flat. So um, let me get on and do all the rest of them and we'll go to the install stage next. Okay let me show you what I've done with the track. So as you'll see here the track is all fixed down um, now some people use track nails, some people use cork, 
um, and um, they're just you know they're pros and cons to each method. I prefer using something which is a, a rubber type of cement, um, and let me show you what I use. I don't know if you get this in the states, but this is what we have in the UK. So it is something called copy decks, and it's used for crafts and and um, DIY stuff like that. Um, it's a strong sort of uh, contact adhesive, and you'll see if I show you over here. This is a little bit of excess bit of bit of um, glue over here, and as you can see here, as you can see that it's kind of rubbery. And it's easy to remove, so you can see if I put it up, and you can see here it's a kind of rubbery kind of cement. And what this means is that it holds it very firmly, but it's also easy to remove if I want to remove the track at a later stage. It literally just peels off, and it peels off the underside of the track as well. Um, it's very, very useful, and I just prefer it over a more permanent solution. It's just easier to to remove the track if I need to, and also if I want to reuse the track, um, doesn't doesn't ruin the track. So that's how I've um, glued down the track. And if I just zoom out here, you'll be able to see all the track is in place. Ignore this one. This is going to be where I connect to the the um, main level of the layout. But everything else is completely glued down. Um, the whole layout is all in place. Um, and let me show you I've done the wiring. So as I showed you in the earlier video, I've installed the feeders. So you can see here where I've made the modification to the track of the feeder wires come out the side. And what I've done is I've installed a piece of spare piece of ply on the side. You can see here that goes all the way down to the bottom over here. So what I've done over here, you can see I've used um, some solder pads. And as I said before, I'm using the orange wire for my uh, block detector sections. And the blue wire is my common. So that'll be the common rail, which will go through to um, the track bus. The orange wires end up going to the block detector. So what I've done, I've just used a bare bit of wire that I've just covered with solder that is joining all the common blocks together. And you can see here, so this, this wire, the blue wire goes into this and that goes through to the next block just using this, this piece of wire. Um, I've just used a bare wire, which is easier for me, but you can obviously use an insulated one. Um, and that just joins all the common sections together. And then each block is here. You can see this goes from this block over here that will go straight down to the block detector and the same with this block and so on and so on. You can see I've labelled each one so I know where it goes. From each level you've got the wires from each block and they all run through to the block detector. So the helix is all wired up and tested and it's all ready for the next stage. So in the final stages of the helix build in the next video I'll be showing you how I've done the block detection. I'll show you how I've connected everything to the block detector and also how I've set up Railroad & Co to test the, the block detection. I've decided to use that just because it's easier to set up rather than using GMRI with Panel Pro to, to fiddle around with the panels to get it all working. It's a lot quicker to use Railroad & Co just to quickly set up the blocks so I can just test that everything is working. I've tested using a couple of locomotives. So what I'm going to do in the next video is show you the locomotives running on the Helix as well as an overlay of the Railroad & Co screen and also of the block detector, so you can see how it all works together. So that's coming up very shortly. In the meantime, if you're not already a subscriber, please click on the subscribe button down below and click on that little bell icon to be notified of the update coming up. So thank you everyone for watching. Stay safe and see you soon.